Hey guys, Mr. Jennings again. I um, want to look at chapter 25 today uh, from your books. Um, give you a little bit of a, a summary of it, some key points. Look at the teacher's lesson a little bit. Uh, hopefully you're working through these and uh, taking the time to read the references um, and read actually through the chapter as you're, as you're doing this. It's not the ideal way to go through the uh, lessons. Um, but hopefully you're getting something from it and growing from it um, as I'm striving to do as well as I'm uh, working through the chapters too and I'm just preparing some key points for you guys making sure that we're uh, really getting some some thoughts out of each of these uh, chapters as we go through. Uh, before we get into chapter 25 a, a couple jokes uh, as always. Um, let's see um, my wife told me I had to stop acting like a flamingo, uh, so I had to put my foot down. Um, let's see. Have you heard about the new restaurant called Karma? There's no menu, you just get what you deserve. Um... What did the Tin Man say? Sorry, the focus isn't quite right here on the video. Uh, but you can still hear me, and that's what's important. Uh, probably rather hear me than see me anyway. So, uh, what did the Tin Man say when he got uh, run over by a steamroller? Uh, curses, foil again. Um, let's do one more before we get into the chapter. Uh, why don't cannibals eat clowns? It's because they taste funny. So anyway, those are the jokes for today. Uh, kind of lame, I know, but that's okay. Uh, looking at chapter 25 in your uh, books, we just did chapter 24, uh, which was knowing God's will, uh, which as I talked about a little bit, can be difficult. We have to put effort into doing uh, but sometimes just as difficult, maybe sometimes more difficult, is staying in God's will, finding it, and getting in it, and and staying in it. Uh, you know, it's 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 something that we have to continually work on. Just like as we talked about these, these chapters, we go through the spiritual wisdom. It's something we need to put effort into doing and growing um, as we go through it. Um, the key points that I want you to see from chapter 25 as a whole before I get into a few more details of some of the things that we looked at. Uh, lesson 25, staying in God's will, the, the key points that hopefully when you got through the chapter, the things that you um, really took from it and that were able to glean from the, the chapter. Uh, first of all, there is a pattern of failure if we stray from God. So if we're straying from him, we're going to continue to fail. We're going to fail at doing his will, obviously, but fail in a lot of other areas, too, as we looked at um, in the chapter. Uh, there were a few examples, specifically in this chapter, uh, Lot, the story of Abraham and Lot, one that we know. Um, but the, the idea of the failure there uh, in his life um, based on you know some of the choices that he made and we'll look at that a little bit more as we go through um, another thing that hopefully you got from this chapter there are definite consequences if we stray from God also we see with Lot um, so a pattern of failure definite consequences if we stray from God's will um, another thing God's will begins with what is happening to us right now and extends into every aspect of our future. Uh, so many times, especially as seventh graders, as middle schoolers, when you think of God's will, you think of something way down the road. Uh, but that's not what it is. Uh, God's will is something that is given to you today. What is God's will for you today, to do today? Um, not so many years down the road. What are you supposed to do today? What is God's will for you with the day that he's given to you? Our lives are different right now. Uh, we're mostly in our houses and we're at home we're not getting out much we're not around people a lot but God still has a will for you and a plan for you today so are we making sure that we are striving to find it know it like we talked about in the previous chapter but then to stay in it and do it today um, and the, the fourth thing that we want to see and we'll talk about this mostly in the teachers lesson uh, 
that Satan will try to blind us so we cannot find God's will. So again, there's a pattern of failure if we stray from God. There are definite consequences if we stray from God. Uh, God's will begins with what is happening to us right now and extends into the future. Uh, and then Satan will try to blind us to seeing God's will and keeping us from it. Um, so one of the main things I wanted to look at, um, basically I'm going to look at the teacher's lesson and then one other section before that. And that was uh, uh, God's will for you right now. And that was a uh, section on page 196 in the book where uh, the answers will vary. They're not provided to you. Um, but uh, you were to provide them yourself. So I wanted to look at that since it's not something that you were given. Um, it says many times we do not even have to think about whether something is consistent with God's will or not. List some of the things that God has called you to do that you do not have to pray about. You simply have to do them willingly. And, you know, I think if we're doing these things, uh, then staying in God's will becomes easier uh, for us. Uh, and as we look at that, you know, you have a lot of decisions that you have to make, um, but you need to be faithful in these, these smaller decisions or in the things we talked about before, the clear things that God gives us to do. Um, we're taking care of those things. That way we can know the future things and the bigger things that are coming down the road for us. Uh, because before you know it, um, you'll need God's wisdom choosing a college, um, a career, a spouse, um, so many other things like that. The big things that we think of when we think of God's will, myself included. You tell me what's God's will for your life. I don't think of what am I supposed to do with today that he's given to me. I think of what's the future hold for me. What should I be doing in the future? But that's not what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about the today, but you know, it may seem a long way off those things, but you're preparing now in the moment for that by the decisions you make today and staying in his will. Uh, learning to obey and follow God's will now will help us make wise choices in those bigger, important decisions down the road. Uh, so, so be faithful now in the simpler decisions of middle school, whatever they may be. Probably you don't think of them as very important. You might feel like you don't have to make many decisions at all. Your parents make your decisions for you, but that's not the case. You have to make decisions with your interactions with other people, uh, whether you choose to, to uh, go along with something someone else is doing. Um, are, are saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Those decisions are shaping you for what you're going to do in the future and the bigger decisions. Make the right, easy, simpler decisions, smaller decisions now, and it'll help you. God will be faithful, and he'll be there to help you in the bigger decisions if you're honoring him with the decisions and choices you're making now. Um, and then, like I said, that's all I wanted to go over a little bit. Uh, before we get into uh, just looking at the teacher's lesson, one of the key points that I already talked about was Satan will try to blind us uh, so we can't uh, find God's will for our, our lives. Um, but the, t the teacher's lesson talks about a little bit more in depth why we don't do God's will. Um, you know, we might have started in God's will, but we didn't stay in it. Um, and first of all, the first section, why we don't do God's will, Satan blinds us. How does he do that? By making us think God's will makes us miserable. And, um, you know, for an example of that, we look at, I would think, of Jonah. And we know the story of Jonah, pretty familiar with that. Uh, I think most of us are. I think we, um, you know, think of how he was, what God commanded him to do to go to Nineveh. Uh, but he didn't want to do that uh, for several reasons. Nineveh was the enemy. He didn't want to go there for fear of, as an Israelite, going to the enemy area. Um, and then he thought of, you know, uh, God, you're going to destroy them if they don't repent. Why do I want to go help them repent? I want them to be destroyed. Um, so if he's successful, then they're not destroyed. If he's successful in doing what God wants him to do. Um, if he goes and he's... Um, not successful in getting them to repent, um, then he's a traitor to the Israelites, and on top of that, he's a failure. Um, so he doesn't see it as anything great. This is just a all-around bad situation, and he feels like, I know better than God what should be done here, and that's why we see him run the other direction, do the complete opposite of what God wants him to do. Um, and it took, you know, eventually he got around to doing God's will and going to Nineveh, but it, it took a lot of hardship for him to get to that point. 
Um, so first of all, why we don't do God's will, Satan blinds us by making us think that God's will will make us miserable. Um, but then second of all, by making us judge uh, by our feelings and by outward appearance. And for an example of that, as I mentioned already, is, is Lot. You know, he was given a choice. He didn't consider what God wanted him to do. It was basically, what do you want to do? And it's like, I'm taking that land. That looks good. That looks really good. I'm going to go there and I'm going to take that. Um, and, uh, you know, he didn't consider God's will. He only saw the present moment. And that's something we can struggle with. Like I said, myself with the, the present moment or you as a, a middle schooler, I think of the present moment and the decisions I don't have to make right now. I don't have to worry about that. Um, but God sees the future and he wants us to view uh, things in a, a future light as well to see, um, you know, not just that what I'm doing now has no impact or bearing on what the future might hold, but it, it means something. Every decision that I make is important uh, because I'm growing, I'm developing that, um, that desire to see what God's will is or the desire to do what my will is. Which one are we choosing? Um, you know, Satan, he's very good at deceiving us um, and making the wrong way look best. As it said, Lot there, he saw fertile land and all these great things and just said, you know what, I'm just going to take that. I don't need to worry about what God wants me to do. I just see something that looks good and that's what I'm going for, kind of appealing to the flesh. And that's what he did there. Uh, but the second part of the teacher's lesson, why we don't do God's will, um, we looked at why how Satan blinds us, but then believers are not in a position to act wisely when sin in our lives keeps us from seeking and finding God's wisdom. And, you know, we think of that as, I thought of it as a parent and child situation or a teacher and student situation. You know, the sin in our lives keeps us from seeking and finding God's wisdom. That, that sin builds up a wall and prevents us from hearing. You know, we might hear what someone says, but we're not listening to it because we have a there's a fracture in the relationship for some reason. Um, but, you know, the, the sin in their lives can keep us from from knowing God's will, as we talked about in the last chapter, but even worse, even addition to that is staying in God's will. That sin can drive a wedge uh, that separates us from God and keeps us from uh, being close to Him. So again, sin in our lives keeps us from seeking and finding God's wisdom. All right, if I'm not talking to... Um, a student and a teacher here, you know, as we look, think of the, of the fact that we're separated and we're trying to make sure we're staying in contact and working through things, because if we can just completely separate that, I'm not going to be working on this stuff uh, because I'll be, I'm helping my children with their things and doing all those things around the house um, that I'm doing. Uh, if we're not staying accountable to making sure as teachers and students we're doing the things we need to to continue through the year even though it's changed greatly from what we're used to. Same thing with a parent and a child. Um, if a child's not listening to what someone might have to say then you know they're not going to be able to uh, to gain wisdom and experience. We might think of our parents as oh they don't know anything I know better than them but there is wisdom there and if we're not willing to listen uh, because there's something that's driving a wedge between our relationship with them, then how can we grow and how can we gain uh, knowledge and wisdom in those those areas? And then lastly, uh, failing believers are not in a position to act wisely when failing to listen keeps us from hearing. I just said that a little bit already, the listening and hearing. Those two words have different meanings. Seem kind of similar to us, uh, but they are different. Uh, and I was thinking of that, you know, uh, we can all fall into that. Um, it can be a very dangerous thing. We think of people that are living away from God and not, um, you know, have no regard for God and the things of God. But but it's going to be a dangerous thing for us as well when we just feel like we're just trying to be good people and do the right things um, as far as just not doing wrong. Uh, but we aren't sensitive to God's leading. We're okay with, hey, I'm just not going to do these wrong things, but I'm not really worried about seeking God's will and trying to really find his will for my life and to stay in it. Um, and we think of Samuel, uh, the example of Samuel in the Bible, and he, he started out right, was doing the right things, um, but later on in life he, he, he wasn't as attentive to uh, what God had for him, and that still small voice, it, it, it faded out. Um, 
to where he couldn't hear it. And I think that can sometimes be us. We kind of get numb to it. You know, I'm just not going to do these wrong things that we think of, you know, all these things that these people are doing. I'm just not going to do those things um, and I'll be good. Uh, but that's not what we need to do because if we do that, then we're just, we, again, we hear the things that are right. We go to church, we do those things and we hear it and we hear it and we hear it, but we're not listening to it in our hearts. And it's not getting in our hearts um, and it's not taking hold in that way. So hopefully that makes sense. I feel like I was kind of going around in a circle a little bit there. But but again, just like in the last chapter, it's important to um, define God's will. It's very important that we do our best to make sure we are staying in God's will. Um, that's a key part of it because we can fall out of God's will even if we are on the right track and doing the right things. There are these things that can take us away that Satan... You know, he tries to prevent us from finding God's will, but if we are in God's will, he's kind of, he's going to try to get us out of God's will. So making sure that we strive to stay in his will and do what he wants us to do. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you again for each of the students. And Lord, uh, just help us each in this time of separation to where we have a lot more alone time and, and time that we can use for whatever we want to do. Lord, help us to make sure we're making it a point to uh, use that time to get in your word and not just to read it um, on, the, on the surface um, or just to um, you know look at look at verses and those things but really to take it into our hearts and to not just hear it but to listen to it and to allow it to uh, increase in us as we are uh, yes seeking your will but then staying in it as well uh, Lord, help each of these students have a hedge of protection around them. Lord, as we know, Satan uh, uh, attacks and tries to take us away from what you want us to do. But Lord, help us to, again, stay in your will and do what uh, your will is for us. And then uh, uh, not allow the things of this world or the distractions around us to take us from it. Uh, again, we thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you've given to us. In your name we pray. Amen.